Thanks, Mike. <laughs> Mike, you've already been recorded, so you can't. Imagine. Oh, there we go. <laughs> so you're, you're um, in the books. You're in the books. So for the students, let's do some brief introductions because I see some new names on here. Um, so my name is Dominique Moore. I work at Prince Eastman. I do architecture and interior design there. Um, and I also co curate these workshops and I'll pass it over to Alex. My name is Alex Hidalgo. I also work for Perkins Eastman. I do construction administration and uh, production drawings. And my name is Andrew Ostrander. Uh, as Dominique said, I'm a newly associated principal with Perkins Eastman. Um, I do a lot of random things for Perkins Eastman, but it covers pretty much all the bases that I think you guys are talking about. Me? Yes, uh, and we have Mike. Mike Massinger from Perkins Eastman. I'm the architect that's actually working on the barn itself. <laughs> yeah. All right, great. So I will kick it off to Andrew. So you guys wanted to be know what an architect does. Um, I am more than happy to spend the next five days trying to nitpick every little thing that we can <laughs> tend to do. But I think what we'll keep it we'll keep it brief because Really, architects do cover a lot of different areas. As Dominique said, she she covers interiors in some cases. Alex covers construction in some cases. I do a little bit of master planning, construction. I do drawings. I do very little design, but at the same time, we are all architects. We got our starts differently. And I don't think of it like a doctor. You go to a different architect for a different type of project. Um, but we all tend to follow the same, same guidelines. Um, Really, when an architect is approached by a client, um, they already have an idea in their head of what they want. No client just says, I need an architect for some reason. I don't know what it is. But and we'll use it with something I'm more familiar with, a residential project. I do a lot of multifamily residential. And usually when we're approached by a client, the client already has an idea of where he wants to build. He has an idea of how many apartments or condos he wants to build. And he's got an idea of what his budget is. And he comes to us looking to make all those things come together in an attractive fashion that he can then market and develop. So when we are approached by a client, we typically take what he's given us. And we first thing we do is we go into a conceptual phase and we start to test it. You know, the client wants 100 units. Does 100 units fit on his site? Does the state of New York allow 100 units on this site? Does the city of, let's call it Porkchester, allow this density in this area? So we start to feed the client back a lot of information after we've tested his ideas. And we start to both come to an agreement on what the best course of action is. So if the client came to us with 100 units and we said, you know, in this area of Port Chester, New York, we can only do 55, that might end the project right there. The other option is that that will, you know, the client will look back at his plan and say, yep, we're going to go forward with that. That's the way to go. And we'll take that information and we'll go into a next phase, which we consider schematic design. And in schematic design, we start to test these processes a little more. I got a one second, my house is going crazy. <laughs> Sorry, my, my kids just walked in the door and the dog went nuts and the house went nuts and everybody just exploded. And some of our, um, <laughs> some of our architects are dads too. <laughs> <laughs> Some of our architects are dads too, and when everybody's home, it is very difficult to work. But I'd rather be home than in the office, if I'm being honest. Um, so, like I said, the next the next phase we tend to go into is a schematic design phase. We've come up with a concept, we've come up with an idea. The owner's on board with it, and at this point, we start to test that idea. We start to develop uh, materials. We start to develop uh, layouts. We start to get a little more in depth, and we start to really feel out what this project's going to be. At this point, we may also uh, reach out to a construction manager and ask for budgeting. We might start to look at how much is this really gonna cost? And at that point, we then go back to the client and say, we have a layout, we've picked some materials, we have a, a half-baked idea of what we think this will look like, and we think we're ready for you to come up with a budget. The client will come back to us and say, yep, seems right, let's go forward. Move into another phase called design development. 
And in the design development phase, we really start to make this a practical design. We, we've got this test and we want to make sure it works. Now we're going into is this, what's the height of this building? What's the structural systems of the building? What are the mechanical systems of the building? How do we make this concept that the owner likes into a real thing? And a lot of this phase, we start to develop some of the details that we will eventually hand over to the contractor who will you know, start to what he's going to build off of. So a lot of cases, we might have a wall section. That wall section will show us from inside to out what the finish is, what the weather barrier is, what the insulation is, what the stud structure is, and then what the finish is on the inside. And from that, we can start to test whether that wall is energy efficient or not. We can start to look at, does that wall breathe properly? And walls are supposed to breathe because if water gets trapped in it, it'll rot, it'll cause all sorts of problems, mold. Uh, if it's a wood stud, it'll rot the wood stud. If it's a metal stud, it could rust the stud. It breathes inside insulation. So we have to start coming up with an idea of what our building is going to be built as so that when we go forward into more complicated details, we already have a good base. And once we've got an idea that is now more well-rounded, we've proved it can work, we are okay on life safety codes, we're okay on fire protection, we're okay structurally, we are okay zoning-wise, we are okay by everybody's book and the client's happy with the budget and the appearance, we go into a much more technical phase called the construction documents. And in the construction documents, or sometimes called contract documents, we start to make the instruction booklet for a contractor to put it together. We start going over every detail. How does a building's corner get put together? What's the, what's the thermal rating of the glass? What's the storefront system? What's the window system? What are the shingles made of? How many shingles? What's the lap siding? What's the, everything gets worked out in this phase. It's for some people who are, who are much more technically savvy. It is, it is their favorite part, you know, I got into architecture because I love putting things together. And this is this is where I shined. I was never a great artist. I was never someone who could say, this is a flat site. Let me build this amazing building. But I like to put things together. And this is this is where this is where I came to shine. So figuring out how a stair meets with the top of a fifth floor level and the fourth floor level and everything else and how it all comes together, and then bringing that out to a contractor. Is, is what was fun for me. So this is this is the phase that I like the most. Nobody else likes it. It is the tedious. It is eight months long in some cases. It is sitting in front of a computer drawing things. It is not fun. But once you're done with it, you can turn over 180 pages to a contractor. He can kind of look at it and go, yep, I can build this. They take it into the city. They throw it in front of a building inspector. They start getting bids from subcontractors, and the next thing you know, you're into construction. Now, this is where Alex seems to be much more savvy than I am because he's friendly with everybody and he can talk anybody's ear off. But in the construction phase, as architects, it's our obligation to represent our design that the owner likes, that the budget worked with, and that was coordinated internally with all of our different consultants. We are the representatives on site to make sure it's being put together the way it's drawn. That means that if a wall is in the wrong place, we've got to find it. If a sprinkler head is in the wrong place, we've got to tell them. If a wall is off-centered and a window is too low, or if for any reason an aspect of code is not being followed, we're the first line of defense for that. So we come out to the site regularly. We are out there with the contractor constantly talking. We are in coordination with the contractor, with the different trades, with the owner, and we're all working together at that point to make sure that everything that goes up in the building is up and in place properly. Um, now, a lot of that was an oversimplification of what an architect does, but it's it's very hard to say that my job working in multifamily is the same as Dominique's job working on interiors, which is the same as Mike Messenger's job on the barn, because all three of those projects are completely different. Dominique's project interiors sometimes are start to finish by the time the client approaches you to the time it's done, three months, four months. Uh, Mike's project with the barn is an existing historical building, which is full of damaged wood and 
has been cleaned up and patched over the years, and you're going to turn it into something different and beautiful, while at the same time not letting it fall down. And with me, sometimes I get a perfectly flat site with nothing on it, and I have to build a whole thing from the ground up without any interruptions. So very different processes, very different styles. But at the same time, we all work with the client, we come up with an idea, we prove that it would work, and then we put it together. And that's really what an architect does. We work for the client to make their idea fit within an aesthetically pleasing design and a budget that they've come up with. So that's all I do. <laughs> I love that. I think that's great. Um, well, while we have some other architects on the line, do you guys want to jump in and say what you think an architect is really quick? So are you. <laughs> yes. Go ahead, Dom. You you go now. It's your turn. Okay, so my turn. Um, so what do I think an architect is or does? So one, I think that we get a lot more credit than we probably deserve because no one job or project is actually done just by us. It takes an enormous team in some cases, especially when we look at projects. Where, I mean, Andrew's used to putting up three, four buildings, you know, on a site for a client over a span of years. So when we talk about that, it changes a lot of hands down from interns, to project managers, designers, to, you know, CA. It's just an, an engineers, all our consultants. So, you know, for, for me, it's really about communication. We communicate things, right? We communicate through words, we communicate through drawings. And we're just trying to create a clear picture to get something done, but we are by no means like the be all and end all, I, I think of any project. I mean, the other architects in the room may disagree with me, but. <laughs> <laughs> Some architects are better at communicating than others. <laughs> my, my, my take of an architect is since I'm in the field a lot, I have learned that I we we put the drones together, like Andrew stated, of the details, the construction document phase that he spoke about. And then it comes to me and Mike, that now we have this set of drawings and now we're going to go to field and we begin. And the one thing I learned more, I, I have and I, I have learned more from the guys that are doing the trades than sometimes what I'm trying to represent in my drawings. Because they do it all the time and they actually take in my piece of paper with black lines on it and dimensions and numbers on it and they're actually going to make it come up in three dimensional and make it live we as architects technology has allowed us now to see that three-dimensional uh projection prior to the building being built but the guys in the field this is how they make a flat piece of paper come alive so i really love the idea of going to the field uh, believe it or not what andrew says i talk a lot is are you actually looking at a shy guy here never talks too much it's just that i have a passion i love what i do that it mm -hmm. seems like i like to talk a lot <laughs> but it is is the idea that i know there's a guy in the field that actually could take what we took six to eight months to draw and he he never sat in the office with us and he's going to make this thing come alive and i just love that idea do i get to go now Yes, no. <laughs> All right. So I think, you know, I, I, I majored in something else in college, something entirely different in, in science and geology, actually. And uh, I couldn't get a job in geology. So after college, I started building houses, which I did for like a couple of years. And I just like to build stuff. I like to smell. I like to cut lumber and nail it together. And, and I still do. I, buildings have a smell and uh, the smell actually changes as the uh, project goes along. It sort of, the, as the smell changes, it signifies what stage the project is in. But after a couple of years of that and, you know, some aches and pains, I thought, you know, I can, maybe instead of taking direction, I can be the, I can learn how to be the boss. And so I went to school and learned how to be an architect. And I found, I think by my guess, about 80% of the population cannot read drawings and cannot think in three dimensions but about 20 percent of us can and most of us end up being architects or like surgeons or dentists or people who do stuff like that and have to visualize 3d and, and then make it happen uh they did that's those are fields that that uh, are good for people who can see that way 
And that's something that I have and that I can do. So I kept going with it and uh, learned how to be the boss. And that's not an entirely accurate way to describe it. But I liked taking ideas and concepts that I could see in my mind and then make them into solid objects. And, uh, yeah, and that's pretty much it. And as they get bigger, as the projects or the ideas get bigger and bigger, you really need more and more people to help you build them which is where contractors come in, et cetera. But because there's only so much you can really do on your own. Um, you know, you need big machines and stuff after a while. So anyway, that's that's it for me. That's awesome. Do you guys have any questions? No questions. Well, you're all muted and you're talking to a computer. <laughs> Well, to build, on what, yeah, to build on what Alex was saying about going into the field, I think when I got out of college, I thought I knew everything about putting everything together. And the first time I was on a construction site, the guy showed me the drawing I had made, said, you've done this all wrong, and then showed me exactly how to put it together in the field and said, why don't you change the drawing to match what I've just done? And I said, That's, <laughs> that was a learning experience. And I think he never stopped learning because these guys have been putting stuff up in the field for sometimes 20 or 30 years, and they they know exactly how it's supposed to go together, regardless of how you've drawn it. And they will be happy to tell you you've done it wrong. And you have to just open your ears and accept the fact that someone who's been in the trade his whole life might know more than you. And I think that's part of that teamwork that we need to establish. No, I definitely, I definitely think that's true. Um... Actually, I kind of just want to know, I mean, Mike, I think it's interesting that you didn't intentionally set out to be an architect and you just transformed into this role. Um, what about from Andrew and Alex made you, what, you know, made you want to be an architect? I, I, I was, um, I was 14 years old and I was sitting in my living room watching cartoons with a box of yodels. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> I'm sure they were. No, no. What is that? <laughs> it's a, like a it's a for, chocolate for us twinkie. Younger people in the room. Okay. I know, I know, I know. But you still they just <laughs> changed the awesome. name because everybody wants to keep changing names. But it's still it's a it's a chocolate filled roll up with cream inside of it, covered chocolate. It's a yodel, right? So I'm sitting in a box of yodels, and I just started drawing. And then all of a sudden, I just said, I think I want to do, I want to learn how to do this. And that, that was it. I just started learning and getting around people that were in construction or, or were doing something that interested me in what I started to draw, just playing around in the living room. And that, that's, that's really how my story goes. <laughs> well, like, like I said, I was never a great artist. I, I can draw, I can draw line work, I can draw buildings. I Ask me to draw a person and it's, it's, I might as well just be coloring in crayons. Um, but I actually, I was going to go into an engineering at school. And when I went to the campus tour of one of the schools that I ended up going to, I saw the architecture building and I saw all the drafting tables and I saw all the cool things that they're working on and like all the projects that the, the fifth year group had had up on the walls. And I was like, no, this is this is way cooler. This is what I want to do. This is what I want to be a part of. Like these guys, there's not a single person I'd have to draw on this entire thing. It's all buildings. And I I quickly went in, researched the application process for the architecture building. Uh, I put together a portfolio because my high school did not have that available to me. There was no portfolio prep. And I basically on a on a prayer filed for early admission to an architecture school with a portfolio I cobbled together in two months and was accepted miraculously. And that's how I got into architecture and I, I loved it. I haven't looked back. Well you must have done good crayon drawings for them to accept you. So a lot of a lot of hard <laughs> fine drawings of like streetscapes and other things around town. So it was not no people, no foliage, no nothing. <laughs> that's awesome. All right, so if you guys don't have any questions, we can go ahead and jump right into um, our class portion of this. Um, I know, um, Matan, you said, okay. There's a, there's uh, a question on the chat. Go ahead. No, he just says, okay, he's still okay. signing. 
um, Matan, I know you said that you had some images. I don't know if anybody else who came to the last class had a chance to collect any images. Um, you can just let me know. You can unmute or let me know in the chat if you guys have that available. I have mine open up if I if you want me to share my screen and show them. We would sure. love it. So, um, Andrew, so you weren't here on the last one. So we um, had like a design task, right? Like a photo challenge to kind of like collect images, um, that inspirational images for the barn, just to get them thinking in the program <laughs> stage for this. So go ahead, Matt. All right, give me one second. <laughs> And all right. So, wow. Um, I just I, I kind of cobbled together um, a collection of just different sort of inspirations for both the in interior, exterior, and some little small features. Just sort of taking in what I've seen um, from the barn tours. And I know one thing that there's a lot of really cool exposed wood um, within the building, and this is also just showing sort of a potential you know use case for the barn with tables and whatnot. But really just showing all the exposed wood. Um, another thing I had mentioned last time on our last tour was when they had all like the Tyvek sheeting up um, on the walls and it kind of looked like they're almost like windows on the corner of the building. So I was thinking um, to do something sort of like this um, with these cool sort of framed in windows. Um, and then this is just another, you know, picture showing the exposed wood on that back wall um, and some more, you know, beams and, and whatnot. Um, this other thing was for the bathrooms to sort of keep it thematic and put like sort of like a rustic esque, um, you know, design. Um, and then along the walls, the colors don't really match quite well. I couldn't find really good to do like some sort of bench seating with storage underneath along the walls of that big room. Um, and then also for the windows, potentially do some sort of like shutters um, and then like a barn door in between that main room and that sort of lobby ish area in the middle of the building. Um, those, uh, those toilet partitions are awesome. Those, yeah. Yeah. those are great. I love that stuff. <laughs> it's very simple. It's great that kind of speaks a little bit to like sustainability, right? Like this could be all reclaimed product. Um, and the last thing was just for the exterior, just keep it really simple. Nothing like crazy. Um, you know, um, Plants just very, you know, simple grass, maybe some stone, it's some very basic landscaping for that. But yeah, that's what I got. I love that. So can, we, can we go ahead, Mike? Uh, oh, Alex. No, no, I was gonna I was gonna ask um the inspirations that you have picked out of, of, of the usage. I think it's incredible how you already vision this for be a community building. Yeah. The functions that community could actually rent it as a as a party hall or whatever because they're going to have plenty of parking and everything there is a great idea maybe there's something to bring up to the uh to the town thank it's, you uh, great idea i love how you're staying within the theme of the exposure of the wood which i think is one of the things that we we the design team has want to keep in the front wall with almost like where you show the tv it seems like mm -hmm. almost the same wall that we're trying to keep exposed. Yeah. <laughs> pretty cool. It's a pretty cool man cave you have there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is a really great direction. I mean, yeah. the one that, you know, we're doing with the city, I know we're doing a lot of drywall and it's actually kind of a shame, right? We're doing a lot of drop ceilings, but here it's like the inspiration is to really expose the entire structure and to, yeah. you know, capitalize on that height. Yeah. I love that. Wow. We're impressed. Thank you. Good job. Good awesome. job. So I have a question. Were you able to log that to upload that or was that still giving some I ha I don't I haven't seen the um like thing to upload it, but I can take another look. Um okay. and if I like just email it to you. Okay, because we may have another platform that may be easier. So I'm going to show you guys in, in a minute, and maybe we can get you to upload them onto that other platform. Um, does anybody else have anything to share? I got a couple, couple. images. All right, let's do it. Um, so share content. Yeah. Um, all right, I'll share screen. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Um, can you guys see these images? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So I was basically like, the when I went on the tour, I kind of like envisioned the barn. Like I know you said it was used as a theater before, but I felt like I feel like it could be used as a theater again. And like these type these types of roofs or roofs that um can like that are used in a theater. So like for example, this one, um, I feel like we can do that again and like have that kind of structured or a more structured rooftop mm -hmm. in a way. And then here's like another rooftop that I think Love like that. can be good. I don't know, like I, I I'm I just like the structure of it and I don't know, I, I think it would be cool to like add add more because I don't know how, I mean, the barn's been up for a long time, but yeah, I don't know, just to give it a, a new look, I don't know, maybe. And then like the seating here um, for for like a theater type, um, yeah, for like a theater, um, I don't know, I feel like this would be good and like maybe upstairs we can add more like seats. I don't know, I just felt like that um, when I went in there, I, I kind of got theater vibes and like I got these images to like kind of like um put two and two together and like I don't or dimension wise I'm kind of confused because it's kind of long one way and then short another way but I feel like we can like um solve around that problem and have like a bunch of seats and then the, the um yeah, the theater in one place and then like the seats in another place. Mm -hmm. So I feel like these seats helped out. And then also like wi mm -hmm. like windows kind of like these right here. I don't know. I feel like those are kind of cool. And then I like this like wood area because this when I saw this picture, it kind of reminded me of the barn. So this was cool. Mm -hmm. And then this last one to like kind of show like, sorry about the watermarks, but <laughs> to kind of show like what we can do in the upper like area seats uh -huh. so, yeah so that's it that's awesome i i love yeah. the fact that there's this common theme of like community space right whether it's one big open space or whether it's like a theater for the community to use and i like how you thought about introducing different materials right so the barn yeah and do we have brick in the back of the barn mike or is it all wood all the way around i think it's all wood it's all wood. It's all wood. So introducing maybe like a brick wall or something in there could be could be kind of cool. I love that. Yeah, I really like the uh, use of the trusses. I think that those the first truss you showed, especially in the wood, I think is, is a really unique way to span a long distance. And it's probably something they did way back in the 20s or 30s, but I think it looks like it would belong somewhere like that barn. And then the second one with the the glass ceiling and the iron, just the idea of how you can bring light into a space without any lights like during the day it could be this transparent ceiling or this 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 glowing object at the top and it would still look like a barn from the outside but you'd have these really cool iron trusses that just let this ceiling glow down on the bottom i think that's a really cool mm -hmm. thing definitely um i was so anthony i saw your note in the chat that's that's totally fine we'll have plenty more time to add um add images and collect them. Um, does anybody else have a chance to put anything together? No, okay. All right, so what I wanna do now as part of our brainstorming process, I'm gonna share my screen. And uh, you guys let me know, I just found this. So um, bear with me, okay, screen on share. Can you guys see my screen? Okay. Yes. Okay. So um, this is called Stormboard. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of it or used it before. Anyone? We use something similar to it called a mirror board, and it looks like a lot of thing where you can kind of add post its and you can kind of track images and post things as a group at the same time. Okay. Yeah, because I was trying to, you know, now everything is virtual and. And, and online, I'm trying to find a way to do what we normally would do in the office, but do it online. So this is like the closest thing I could find. Um, so one of the things that we normally do when we start a design process is we 
brainstorm. We, we ask ourselves, and this is called the five whys, right? We ask ourselves five times why we think something should be the way it is. And what that does is it helps us reduce our answer to a truest or purest form so we can get right to the point of what we're trying to do to really kind of establish our goals. Um, so I started with a few questions just to, just to get us going. So this is totally interactive. Please jump in. I can't see my chat when I share the screen. So if you guys do put something in chat, um, Alex, can you, can you monitor that? Yep. And uh, architects, please feel free to jump in as well. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's kick it off with the first one. Who should use the barn? I feel like the community should use the barn because I don't know. I feel like they, we need like a place to like either hang out or like have something where people, yeah, like kids in the school, like Anthony said, like, I don't know, like something where kids can like hang out and feel like secure and go somewhere after school or yeah. Yeah, I, I agree with that too. Like having a place where people can work together. And I know a big thing with like group projects is really difficult to do stuff with like over the computer. So having a place for schoolwork too as well. So it could be like a place where people can relax and work in a place that's easier because I know working for me at home, I have like a little brother, I have like a dog, I have so many people. So I think it'd be nice to have a place like that too. Or we'll have a community, community Starbucks. <laughs> One the, great, the great thing about this is that all ideas get thrown up so yeah. here you go <laughs> <laughs> one thing we had mentioned uh was like turn as some during the tours was um using it as like a space for farmers markets or other like sort of community events yeah, because the farmers market can't be out on the road anymore right they had to move it so maybe we can invite them to be here just because I know that the place where they used to have it down, um, I don't remember the name of the road, but they used to have it in a place and they can't have it anymore because of COVID and they don't know where to go. So maybe we could talk to some people who do that and, and see if they'd like to do that there. Awesome ideas. Now I understand that everything we're putting here, we're eventually going to bring it to the school district because I think they need to know how you guys, part of the community, will want to see this building being used by your community. So mm -hmm. whatever we bring in now, we're gonna talk back to the school district and let them know that this is some of the things that we we finding out through the research of you guys, thank you for your input, that all the, all the function, they might have an idea how they wanna use it, mm -hmm. but we're just gonna bring something new based on what you guys bring up, you know. So, so yeah. Ahead. So, you know, there's a there's a funny thing about public work and public jobs. This is owned by the city, right? The school and the school district that they they want to accommodate other uses like that. Like they let people use the gym to play basketball on Saturdays, for example. But they never forget that their primary function is to be a school. And so they'll they will let people use it for other stuff up to a point. And as soon as they get the sense that it might have a problem with the, uh, running the school, like with COVID, for example, if they think that somehow a use on Saturday as a farmer's market is going to affect them being able to have school on Monday, they'll say no. And it doesn't, you can't always predict it, and it doesn't make sense. But I can tell you, like, at the end of the summer, when the big building, the main building was still under construction, the, the, um, the playground was finished in the back like in, I don't know, in early, mid-July or August. But technically, it was still a construction site and it was closed. And every day I was in there and all of the people from the city would look out the windows and say, you know, we've told these, it would be filled with kids. And they'd say, you know, we've told them a million times, it's not open yet, you gotta get off the site. And they, uh, it, it, there's a funny thing about that. So just, I'm just putting that out there. Don't be disappointed if they say no to any of these ideas. I have to be flexible. Got to know how to pivot. All yeah. right. So, so for who should use the barn? We got a we got a good, a good assortment. Any any other kind of categories on who could use the barn? 
Um, like clubs, I know there's a couple of uh, school clubs that I'm a part of that really want to find a better place to to do some work outside of the schools. Maybe that could be a place. Um, I also had a question about like the Starbucks. What if we it's like how how difficult or how much of a reality is it to actually open up like a coffee or like just like a little food area in the barn? Because I know you have to talk to the people to be able to do that. Alex? Well, <laughs> that, you, you, you're creating uh, entrepreneurship here and I, and I love it because I, I, I don't know how exactly the, the, the barn is going to eventually be funded because I think it's going to require a different budget for the city, <laughs> mm -hmm. right? Because it's not, I don't think it's going to be considered part of the school budget, but I think they were, they were kind of forced to build the barn because continue the the barn because of the community input into it and how historical it was and also the historical society for Stanford. So they were um, kind of forced to do something they may not even want it to do. So it's a good idea to bring it up how to create uh, so the so the barn could sustain itself in a way to how to maintain itself in in maintenance and, and whatever else they need that it creates its own budget. That's a great well, idea. really good idea though. I like it. What about like people could bring in their own stuff if we put like a little area where like like nothing nothing like a huge massive like kitchen but like maybe like um, a microwave or like a little stove or something like, like people can can yeah like a little place because I I know how to bake and cook and I and if if I had the ability to go somewhere where I could do that and give it to other people because I always end up making way too much that would be really cool people could bring in their own food and share with other people. Uh, for, for Anthony, for Anthony, oh, I just want to just double back um, for Anthony. He just had a question. So a vendor, yeah. space, so a vendor is um, like a merchant, right? Someone coming in with goods for sale. So like if I have my own little coffee cart, or I'm a baker and I'm coming in with pastries and cakes, then I'm considered a vendor in this space. Right? So can I can I go back to um, can I be the wet blanket now and? <laughs> <laughs> There's always no, no, one on the team. Yeah. Yeah. But it, it opens up it opens up a discussion for broader things, which is zoning in a city, right? Mm -hmm. Zoning, if you've noticed, you know, all the houses are kind of in one area and all the commercial stuff is in another and all the industrial stuff is in another. That's because they fall into zones, which are there's a there's actually a map probably on the city website that tells you what kind of building you can put in one place within a city. And um most American cities have this. Houston is actually the one exception. There's almost no zoning in Houston. And so you can literally see like a log cabin next to a high rise built office building. But um, so having like a commercial space, like like uh, in whatever form it would be, it's there permanently, it actually goes against the zone because like the people who live across the street or next door from the barn, they don't want to see that every day. So they will complain. and during construction they've already have complained about some of the work so mm. however i can tell you what a lot of schools do i don't know if stanford high school does this but some of them have like a little trailer it's almost like a little food cart and they bring that to like football games and they set it up and they sell popcorn and whatever out of it and then whenever there isn't a football game which is most of the time they store it or they can drive it around to different stuff and that that's a common way for for schools to be able to sell stuff during an event. Because like if nobody's there, like on a Tuesday morning or something, you know, nobody's there to buy stuff. So a, a vendor, it would not be worthwhile to be there. But so is just throwing that out there that that might be a, so just some things to think about. It, it's a great idea, but it has its limitations or you just have to adjust the idea to make it work with what's what's out there. And that, that, brings, that brings it back to the topic that, Andrew spoke about and when the client comes in and brings the idea of how many units they would like to have because they think it's a piece of property or whatever. And then we as architects go into the zoning, into the codes and would let them know the limitation because of the state regulations on that, on that piece of property. So it might just bring in a circle about zoning again, the zoning against commercial, residential, those type of zoning that happen. So. Yeah, we, we go in and do exactly what Mike just did. We throw a wet blanket on there. 
Pretty much. <laughs> and a, co- it's and a client. For this, guys. The, the, we're in the stage of possibilities, right? Oh. Bring them back. Bring them back. Um, no, but this is all good information, and it should be noted. So I have my little my little gray posted there. For uh-huh. my Bad posted. Um, so let's get into let's get into some activities. So I know we're kind of going back and forth between who could use the barn, but now let's really talk about like what activities can can be hosted in the barn. Well, I think um, I forget who put it up first. You know, it, it was it it functioned. Its last its last life was as a theater. Mm-hmm. It was a community theater from like the 1970s until I'm not sure when it closed, but um, most of what we're taking out of it is from when it was a theater. Was it Matan who showed the image of it as a banquet hall or as a wedding setup? But that was a different building, wasn't it? Yeah, no, but but the yeah, same yeah, yeah, idea. Of, yeah, you have like a, a large bank open hall. space. Yeah, like weddings. Yeah. yeah. What, well, mm-hmm. one of the things that I remember the principal principal told told us about that sometimes the um the school the the Stanford Trade School has um events for real estate brokers and they cater them there because huh. part of their um part of the curriculum one of them is about um a cooking culinary they have a culinary uh, section there in high school and she was telling us that she could see this being used like that. And for the special groups, real estate brokers, or you know how or sometimes even maybe us, to go and find a place to rent and have the community supply the vending, and that's what the high school does. They they cater it for the they, for the real estate brokers, and they get to use the talents in cooking, and then at the same time, the school is being used for community for private function or something. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, anybody else have any ideas on what we could do in space? Private functions, um, you know, seminars, private seminars. Um, How big is the barn? How many people would it hold when it was a theater? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, probably like folding chairs, probably. 200 or somewhere between two and 300, I bet. That's pretty is that a, is that a large enough capacity for, uh, let's say, like a student awards night or any of that kind of thing? Uh, probably not for like an entire school, but maybe for one grade. Yeah. Uh, add in, you know, if you add in parents and grandparents, it gets pretty full pretty fast. It gets fast. pretty, pretty tough. Yeah. Well, not these days. These days, no. Well, true, but these days it's all virtual. So. Mm-hmm. Put the big screen up and project it. How about how about you, Jordan? Do you have any kind of ideas on what the space could be used for? A gallery. Ooh, oh, I like that. Like an art gallery? Oh, oh. An art gallery to have private shows. You know how you have these, oh, that's, oh, that's these private that's art, 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 art people that have these galleries and they go to a different, uh, like a bar and they rent out the back room and they, and they could do it there. Like that's, that. community. That's, a yeah. that's a great idea. Yeah. How about the time when you were collecting those images? How else did you see the space being used? It, uh, you know, there was one thing about concerts, which sort of ties into the um, sort of like theater, mm-hmm. thing, but just like really just community events, like youth groups and other things like that, who need space to meet. Um, so just general, like just meetings. Yeah. Right? So. We have 15 minutes, maybe we can squeeze in one more. Um, so what do you think that we are trying to achieve here? Like, what do you think some of our goals for this barn space could be? I mean, I don't mind kicking it off. I think one of my goals would be to, um, which is, um, you kind of have no choice, 
but to kind of retain as much historical significance as we can. So I'll just say historical. Anybody else? Anybody else have any goals or maybe even team goals? What's a good goal, Andrew? You're a project manager. When you set your team goals, what are you what are you looking at? My goals are always boring. My goals are to get it in on time and under budget. Those are not <laughs> those are not fun goals. Well, I want well, fun well. goals. <laughs> took a, took a That's a king size wood blanket. Yeah. <laughs> that's why I didn't, that's why I didn't share. They're not fun. <laughs> Okay, we're putting that we're putting that in the gray. The gray <laughs> Can I get a gray sticky tab for that? No. <laughs> uh, just in general, one of the goals that um uh, for for the project itself for you guys is that we want to have the opportunity to have you guys experience as much expo exposure in the field of architectural construction that we have in our hands that we are able to bring to you guys. That's part of a goal so you guys experience whatever it is that you eyes may be open to later on is that's why we're bringing on colleagues like Mike who explained the project last time and then Andrew who explained a little bit more what architecture is and later on he'll be giving a little other other little 15 minute um, lectures in reference to specific in the fields and we'll try to bring it back so you guys could begin to apply some of this knowledge into the project of the barn and we're looking for you guys for the platforms and how we could make this happen so all the visions and images you guys are bringing into you ideas right now that we could implement them and and create something towards the end and see how we could reward the effort you guys are putting into i love that i'm, I'm one seeing of my goals. some I'm seeing some some chats pop up, but I can't see it all. Um, Anthony, if you want to re put your idea in the chat, I didn't see it earlier. Aaliyah, I love that going back to the artwork to hang up on the walls. Or cheesy games. That's right, right? Mm -hmm. So bingo then, right? You That's know what? Bingo, bingo night is huge. You yeah, know. bingo night. I'm saying. I, <laughs> I pass by those churches and want to go in. So part cheesy bingo game, like a game night. Oh, that's fun. Okay, so this is a process that's like ongoing, right? So like when we come back to this, basically what we would be doing is now. Why? Well, why do we want Parcheesi bingo and game night? Is it because there is no other place for kids to go? You know, back in my day, we used to have teen night. I don't know. Maybe you guys don't have that anymore. You know, maybe that's the reason why. So we're going to like build upon these initial reactions and like get more into depth. Um, this platform, I'm going to add you guys on. So between now and our next class, you guys will have free range to come in here add your stickies, create mood boards, upload your images, and just kind of have this network of information that we can all um, look at and collaborate with. Because the main idea is that we're putting all our ideas down and everybody's getting a chance to look at it. So I will do that and I will send that information out um, through the website and also that text thing. So did everybody receive my text? Through that platform, what is it called? Remind, remind, remind. I remind. got it. I'm sorry, I'm showing my age. Yes, remind. Okay, great. So I, I'll be posting. <laughs> I'll be posting it in there, and then I'm also going to be posting it on the website for you guys. So definitely be on the lookout for that. And as always, if you guys have any specific interest, something that we didn't cover that you want us to get into. Send us a message, call us, send us an email, send me something back on your mind. You know, we're here to just, you know, help you guys explore this field in any way that we can. Having a small library, yeah, see? I love this, I love it. Let me add that. A lot of places are getting rid of books. The space for yeah. Because uh, that library at Central Connecticut, they've got a de plan, which is cutting back their collection almost in half. 
they need the space for student activities. So library books are available out there. No, it's probably big enough for a voting site too. A voting site. Yeah, four years. Look, Mike, right. you got a colors post it. <laughs> <laughs> Having waited in line last night for hours. Hey, you you can early vote. You're not in Connecticut. In New York, you can. Oh, you're in New York. Yeah. Yeah, our voting site's right across the street from me, so I'm I'm just gonna go on when it's voting day. On the third. Yeah. Guys, look at this chat. Okay, wait, a drop box for canned food, clothes. Oh, like so, what would we call that? Like a drop site for goods. Yeah, because they I used to go to a different school where they had that where where people who, you know, like students who didn't have um, a lot of money could go and pick up clothes and food and things like that. And also, like I said, I don't know if you read it already, but like a volunteer because we can have tutors there as well because of school clubs and people can do their work there and we can volunteer to have tutors. Also, if you want to ask about tutors, I'm part of ECS and they have a tutoring program. So maybe we can ask if people can go there like physically instead of doing it over calls as well. Oh, I love it. Let's do that. Can you can you put the name of that that group in the chat for me? Sure. Thank you. And then what else do I see in here? Recreational sports equipment. I apologize if I'm spelling something wrong. Do you mean like an exchange for equipment? That would be good. That what may be like it. either that, that or like I don't know somewhere where like they have equipment and you can just like come and play wherever whenever you want. Uh, mm -hmm. Like, like maybe cool like or... leagues rent it out and like you they could play there. Um, That's not a good idea. Uh, because and I know, what about like, like... Le le yeah? You can go. Oh, sorry. Um, no, we can finish. I'm sorry. Uh, you could go. Um, well, what about like, there's the idea where you can put um, plants on the wall. I know that sounds weird, but it's like these are like little um, squares of plants and each one has like a water system where it'll just drip down so people don't even have to do anything for it. And it's just there. It's like, you don't have to manage them at all and they won't die. You can get like succulents and stuff. They're like very, very easy to manage plants so that people don't have to worry about always watering them. Uh, uh, Alija, that's a great idea, and I think that 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 is an image that it may be one of the images that you put for your idea what the barn should hold in, because I saw that in the uh, in the Harrison Building Department, they had a huge like a column, and they uh, in a round column, and around the whole column was this plant, and I asked the young lady who was maintaining, it happened to be there that day I went, and I asked her a lot of questions about it. And that's actually coming out of an idea from Walt Disney. Mm -hmm. the, the, those column with plants and they're all sustaining LED lights and they just, they kind of basically water themselves. You just fill it up once and they water themselves kind of thing. Yeah, it's, it's something, really, it's like a drip system, I think. Yeah, like the water really goes cool down. Yeah. That would be a great image for your, for your idea what the barn should have inside as a part of the interior design part of it. I love this. Guys, this has been such a fantastic, fantastic brainstorming session. I love it. Thank you guys for all your information. Keep all of this going. Keep all your brains going. I'm going to add you guys to this. You can fill this whole thing up with stickies by the time we meet next time. Um, so if you guys have any questions for us, if not, uh, I will let you guys sign off. And if you're doing anything in the chat, Where's my chat monitor, Alex? Anthony, Sorry. is next time real? Is the next trip going to be a real, <laughs> a real uh, thing or virtual? I think the next trip is going to be a real trip. We trying to set it up so it may be one of the buildings that was visited in the beginning, whether it be the, the residential building that we're doing or uh, a corporate building that is going on right now that some of you guys mm -hmm. had the experience to go because now the progress is beyond the construction aspect of it and the residential we're now doing the wood framing and doing all the roughing for the trades the plumbing electrical mechanical 
and then incorporate it probably already in the process of doing the finishes. So we're trying to hook up another trip. The next trip will be a physical trip in, in Stanford or in Harrison. Yeah, so definitely for the barn uh, in two weeks will be real. So we'll meet on site again. So you guys will need to fill out those um, health survey forms. When you come, you can either send it back beforehand on the day or bring it with you. And then to Alex's point, we are scheduling other um, site tours to other places outside of our barn workshop that all are welcome to sign up for. So definitely be on the lookout for that. Um, and again, please, any comments, we would love to hear it. So send us, send us those as well. All right, there's a well, thank you. Um, Andrew, thank you for jumping on. Thanks, Andrew. No we problem, guys. Mike, as fun. always. All right. Well, you guys have a great night. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye, Bye guys. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.